Good morning, this is Barbara Slavin at the Morse Institute Library, and it's September 27, 1999. We're interviewing Leslie Van Tassel as part of our Veterans Oral History Project. Um, Mr. Van Tassel, just for the record, how do you spell your last name? Capital V-A-N, right. capital T-A-S-S-E-L-L. -L. And may I ask your age? I'll be 74 next month. 74. And where do you live? In Natick. Mm -hmm. And uh, your marital status? Uh, married as of this morning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you have any children? Yes, two. Uh -huh. And any grandchildren? Two. Oh, excellent. Uh, where were you born? Stoneham, Mass. Mm -hmm. And raised in Stoneham? Well, I, I lived in the Boston area for quite a few years, and then I moved to Dedham. I was in Dedham for 25 years or so. And uh, what was it like uh, when you were growing up? What was your what was Dedham like? Well, probably the same as Natick here. Yeah. You know, little kids going here, going here, school, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, seeing what's going on, join the crowd. You know, and you know, mischievous things. You know, like little kids get into and yeah. so forth. Uh, you know, I uh, remember you know uh, growing up the uh, the uh, Spanish American War and. Uh, you know, hearing things like that, and then in the background, I heard people talking about Hitler, Mussolini, and you know, uh, yeah. You know, as a little kid, you know, I remember all these little things, but the, the whole picture I never knew, yeah. you know, till I get older. What was your family background? Uh, my father was a welder for the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, and uh, my mother was a housewife, mm -hmm. and there were six of us in the family, yeah. and. Uh, there's now three left. I uh, want to get yeah, three left. Three. Four of us are left. Uh, when and where did you enter the military? Ma'am? When, when did you enter the, the armed services? Oh, I was drafted in uh, November 1943. I was uh, a senior in high school. And, uh, and then uh, in February 44, I got called directly into the service. and. Uh, uh, in Boston, and uh, we went from there to Rockford, Illinois, at Camp Grant, and I spent a few months there. What branch of the was that? The Army? The Army Medical Corps Army was drafted Medical into, Corps. right? And did your friends or family join the military? Well, I had a brother who was in the Marine Corps, and uh, he unfortunately got killed in Ambulance accident in this country, oh. but. Uh, I had friends go in the service, you know, kids in the neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of them went in the Navy. What was basic training like? Well, in Rockville, Illinois, it was in the middle of the winter and the snow blew sideways <laughs> and it was pretty cold, a little bit of mud. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you done this, done that, push-ups and finger exercises, hikes, and uh, you had to went to these uh, uh, these various uh, educational uh, seminars, shall we call them, and, uh, you know, we've done all those things at any basic, so 16 weeks of basic training. What's a finger exercise? Ma'am? You said a finger exercise? Yeah, I remember, I remember one day we said, he lined us up and said, let's do finger exercise. <laughs> I think he was just looking for something to kill time or something. And when you say educational seminars, what, what were they about? Well, these were, uh, you know, telling you all about uh, the facts of life and tell you what you had to do. We went and learned how to uh, take care of patients and so forth, mm -hmm. medical training. Yeah. And, uh, and what was your specialty? Well, your basic training in medics, you, you, get, a, you get a broad uh, uh, idea of what to do, you know, uh, yeah. take care of the wounded, take care of the sick hospital, you know, you, you were set up with, with life. Uh, soldiers in the hospital, you learn how to take care of them and so forth. Mm -hmm. How did they uh, decide that you would, were to be a medic when you were drafted? How did they? Well, they, how did they you know, you know, there's, there's, there's no sound and reason why they put you here and put you there, you know, yeah. unless you specifically volunteer, which, which I couldn't because I, I, I was drafted, yeah. see. And uh, I guess uh, they said, you're a medic and you're a. You're, you're, yeah. Are you glad that they chose it, it you? It didn't bother me, no. Yeah. 
Uh, did the military prepare you for uh, cultural differences that you might have faced uh, in the armed services, working with people from different backgrounds? No, uh, I don't remember anything, uh, uh, any conversation, any training regards to uh, uh, different people. I remember we had uh, uh, the black people were uh, made mostly in the quartermaster corps, and uh, we had a lot of uh, Mexicans, Mexicans that were in the infantry, and uh, you know it. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't know anything about these things, but when when I when I get drafted and went to the service, I saw all these things. You know, and uh, so but they never gave us any rhyme or direction or anything. They didn't in those days, I don't think. Were they uh, still fairly segregated then? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. What was your first duty station? Your first duty station. Well, we got we got rounded up as a as a general hospital in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, then they loaded us on ships and took us overseas in a twelve day trip to Europe, and uh, we uh, set up a hospital in the Cherbourg Peninsula, General Hospital, and uh, that was uh, what you might say my first. Uh, real job in the Army. What was your trip overseas like? Well, I say it took us 12 days and uh, it was slow because, you know, there were tankers and all types of ships in the uh, formation and uh, uh, we had to travel slow and we, uh, you know, we exercised and don't, we could slept mostly and, uh, you know, we, I was on the English ship HMS Liverpool and uh, uh, you know, we had fish for breakfast. <laughs> you went over on the Liverpool, the HMS Liverpool. HMS Liverpool, oh, yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, and when, what year was that? In uh, in September 1944. Okay. Were you uh, excited about going overseas? <clears throat> oh well, it was a, it was a. Uh, it was a new adventure for me, you might yeah. say. You know, I had lived a kind of a, not a quiet life, but you know, I'd lived. You know, and uh, <laughs> I guess like every uh, kid wants to get out of the house and leave home and do yeah. something. You know, was, uh, I didn't really complain. It wouldn't have done any good anyhow. You know. And uh, could you tell me what it was, what your work was like on the uh, Cherbourg Peninsula? Well, we set up a hospital, like I say, and a general hospital, and. Uh, we had an airstrip close by, which was an old uh, landing strip, and uh, yeah. they brought in, uh, you know, casualties for us, and we sent casualties out that went over to England. We, we, we were they had ambulances and so forth, bring people in, and uh, the general hospital was a place where a soldier who was wounded or needed medical attention had a little bit more time to uh, to recuperate and so forth. So it was. Uh, it was uh, like uh, 12 hours a day for seven days a week for, well, I was, we were stationed there for, uh, I guess, September, October, November, December, up until, I guess, until sometime in March, we were, we were, we were, you know, uh, running the uh, general hospital, so. Mm -hmm. So what type of um, injuries or sicknesses did most of the patients have that you treated? Oh, they, uh, well, they, they, were, they were not critically wounded. The general Hospital uh, would take those uh, people that, uh, who could be uh, returned to duty and needed, needed medical attention, but they, uh, they uh, need a little bit more uh, time to recuperate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we saw people who were, had a lot of jaundice cases and uh, trench foot, when that started to show up, there was trench foot cases. And uh, of course, they brought in civilian people who had been wounded out. There's still a lot of mines around, and uh, they'd get injured occasionally. And uh, so they brought in all types of people to us. And then, of course, we had uh, GIs who were right in the area that uh, you know things would happen to them. I remember one night they brought in an MP who got he shot himself accidentally, and with a 45, he was cleaning with a cartridge in it, mm. shot himself. Now, were the people you treated, were they uh, all uh, Army people? 
The United yes. States Army? Predominantly Army. Okay. Right. Did you, uh, and how long were you there in the general hospital? Well, we, like I say, we set it up in September, the end of September, right. in 44, and uh, sometime in, uh, I guess it was around March, that they began uh, breaking up the hospital and uh, sending troops here and troops there, and I, I get reassigned to a, a POW hospital, which was only a few miles away. In the um, the general hospital, did you have patients there also suffering from what we call battle fatigue or any psychological disorders, or was it all medical? We had a few. We had a we had a what they call a Section Eight ward, and mm -hmm. uh, there was psychiatrists and doctors and nurses, mm -hmm. and uh, they, their their level of uh, psychosis, if you will. Uh, was such that it could be treated or could be taken care of, and uh, there was, you know, uh, attention given to these individuals. Mm -hmm. But people who had uh, advanced problems, they they were usually flown to England, mm -hmm. and uh, we we didn't. Uh, we had people who things happened to them, but but we didn't have a a, a large amount of people who had uh, problems like that. Mm -hmm. What other types of um, problems, uh, medical problems, did people have aside from jaundice and trench foot? Were you, did you deal with uh, wounds? Oh yes, we uh, had a lot of people wounded, yes. Yeah. And what were they wounded with? Was it bullets or mortars? Oh yeah, bullets and shells. And shells, yeah. What was your typical day like as, as if there was such a thing as a medic? What did you do from morning till night? Find your way up in the morning. Right. Get, get a some to eat for breakfast, and trudge over to the wards, and uh, we would do whatever we had to feed them, take care of the uh, 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 bandaging and so forth, help with that, and uh, it was uh, just, uh, if you will, if I may use the word drudgery, yeah. it, uh, it uh, you know, it, uh, it just, uh, you know, day in and day out it was like that. Then we had the weather problem, it rained constantly and it was muddy. So we, uh, we had, uh, you know, the same problems day in and day out. Of course we had uh, a PX there and we had movies which made life a little better. We, we get pretty well set up after a couple of months. We, we set up some buildings. I didn't set them up, but they, I helped to set them up at the uh, Corps of Engineers came in and set the buildings up. Do you remember the movies that you saw? No, I don't. Yeah. What was your um, your R and R like? What did what did you guys do in R and R? Well, we wrote letters with the movies, and uh, we were kind of confined to the area there for for a while because of, there was still some Germans off the coast of uh, uh, France there in the Guernsey, Guernsey and Jersey Islands, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we, we was restricted to our area. We, we couldn't just get out and walk around. Did you then, did you have a chance to meet French people, French civilians? Uh, very few, but I did meet some, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in hearing about your uh, POW hospital. Could you tell me about that? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. We was... Uh, when they started breaking up the hospital, they sent people there, people there, my buddy and I, or my buddy, he fell lived in the tent with me. And uh, they told us one day we were getting transferred, and so we packed up our goods in the A bag and B bag, you know, and slung them over our shoulders, and the truck picked us up. <clears throat> we get all set to go cross country. We actually went up the road a few miles, and over a few miles, and over in a place called Lison, France, I can show it to you in the map. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they, uh, they had, uh, which was former American hospitals, which were full of PWs who were wounded and so forth. <coughs> and uh, what we done was we went over there and uh, we were put in as the administration in the hospital. We had nothing to do with the medical end of it. I, I had a, I was transferred to the Signal Corps. And we operated the. Uh, switchboard there for the three hospitals. That is switchboard for the guard people, for the administration people, incoming calls, outcoming calls, and uh, all the things that went on. So you weren't uh, working as a medic for the German no, prisoners? I didn't. No, I yeah. didn't. No, no. 
before the interview, you showed me a picture of a German prisoner or an inscription from a German prisoner. How did he get to know you? Oh, well, they, they worked for us. You know, if you had oh, okay. something to do, you, uh, okay. you know, they took care of uh, cleaning and all, whatever was done. You had, uh, you had, you had about 50 domestic maids, so to speak, you know. Yeah. What was, um, how did you feel about the German prisoners? Well, there was, you know, uh, I didn't have any serious emotions about them, but you know, they, they come in and we had to watch them. They took, they took care of things and uh, uh, you got to know them and, and of course we didn't have the bad prisoners, the, the bad ones like the SS hmm. and those type of people. They had, they had a special compound by themselves. We had just regular run-of-the-mill soldiers, hmm. you know. Uh, if you get right down to it, some of them pretty much down to earth. They weren't uh, they weren't the Hellions that, uh, you know, some of them were. Yeah. And there was a uh, couple of young kids there They weren't any more than 15, 16 years of age. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you think that we uh, gave them pretty good medical care? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. got, uh, they got uh, the same as uh, any American soldier anybody had. We had to, it was the Americans that run the hospital and they took care of them. They were doctors. Yeah. And, uh, they, yeah, they, too, they had pretty good care. Yeah. Did you form any uh, good friendships with your fellow soldiers overseas? Oh, sure. I yeah. met a lot of guys. That, yeah. you know, uh, I still write to a friend of mine down in New Bedford to go see him when I oh, can. Yeah? He's in Fairhaven, I should yeah. say. And uh, I guess a couple of the other people. I know one person passed on. He lived in Iowa, and I used to write to him. Uh, his wife wrote me one day he passed on. He got TB overseas. Uh. and. Uh, happens. Yeah. What was the uh, weather like? I know you mentioned the mud and the rain. Was that your predominant memory? Uh, yeah. And, 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 and if you read about the English weather, the French weather just as bad because the wind and the weather come blowing down the English Channel. And uh, the wind and the rain come right down across the peninsula there. In fact, France is uh, wet for quite a few months a year. and. Uh, it uh, rains quite a bit, and it clears up like it is today, and then all of a sudden there'll be rain come, come in. So it's, it's rainy and muddy. And how did the countryside look to you? Well, it was a little bit wrecked when I met it, and, uh, uh, yeah. but the countryside's pretty nice over there. Yeah. What are some of your most memorable experiences as a medic? Well, uh, I guess they're all linked together because they, they, it was it was the same uh, thing you'd done. You'd done what you could to help people, you know, bandaging and and taking care of their needs and so forth. And uh, like I say, it was you know uh, continual for the months that I was there, yeah. taking care of them. Uh, there was no specific one experience I can speak of because they were, they were exactly the same. In fact, you could, you could put the word monotony in there if right. you would. Yeah. How was the food? Well, you know, we ate those uh, uh, magnificent eggs, eggs that somebody thought about. And, and of course, we had food that was rationed. And, uh, but we survived. I mean, it wasn't that bad. Uh, uh, in, in areas in the army during World War II, they, some people couldn't get any food. And some people, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about the military, had had food that was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, 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 as a hospital, had to come up with a better type of, better food serving and better food. Mm -hmm. It was the same food, but it was it was served better, uh, and because uh, we were taking care of people, right. and there were there were ill people, mm -hmm. and they had to have a little better care. Do you feel, uh, how do you feel about what you did in terms of the greater war effort, You're taking care of soldiers? Well, I felt though <clears throat> I'd done my part yeah. and uh, I'm not unhappy about it. I mean, uh, I'd done what I could not done what I was told, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there are, you know, there are things that, uh, that happen that, you know, you get memories of, but, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, I have uh, got any 
real uh, memories that haunt me or anything. Yeah. When you were uh, in France, how did you hear about the war in other areas of the world? We had uh, Stars and Stripes newspaper, and we had the British, BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, we had some loudspeakers set up in the, in the area, and uh, and we had on the uh, one bill we had a map of uh, Europe and the South Pacific, and uh, there was a fellow in the outfit that was artistic, and he would mark it up every day. They called it mark up the map. And, uh, Did you work alongside British soldiers? No, the British uh, the British were, were in a different sector. Okay. And uh, this was just American time. The British sector was up north in the, in the coast there. I did go to, uh, can't think of the name. Uh, but there were British up there. I went up there one day with a with an MP. He invited me to go along with him, and uh, we went up. Uh, oh, well, I'll think about oh, that's it. Okay. After the POW uh, hospital, where, uh, where did you go after that? Well, they they I guess they were moving troops back home, and uh, I I didn't have sufficient points to uh, go home, and uh, so what they done they were taking people. Uh, from various parts of the, the country, England, every place, and moved them into Germany mm -hmm. in the Army of Occupation. I went up to, uh, I went up to Reims first, and the Repel Depot, replacement depot, and uh, we were there for a few weeks, and then, uh, then they loaded us a bunch of trucks, and we went up into Germany, and uh, we went to Wiesbaden, Germany, which was the Air Force headquarters, and uh, we went to work, uh, run the switchboards. There. And when, now when did you go to uh, We Spartan, Germany? Do you remember? Oh, that was maybe some, sometime in the summer. Of what? Some, June or someplace. Uh, 1944, right? 44? Four, or 45? Yeah, 45, 45. 45, yeah. Right. So what was that like? Oh, it was, wasn't too bad, the, uh, the war and the... Uh, yeah, it's either war, uh, yeah, the war, yeah, the war in uh, South Pacific had ended to win me. Okay, yeah. Well, we went up there, we, uh, uh, you know, we lived in a hotel, and uh, we, uh, the switchboard center was right next door. It was called the Signal Center. Yeah. And uh, we went there, we done, uh, you know, we ran the switchboards, and uh, it was, <clears throat> it was pretty good because we had places to go then, there were movies, and there was a, Big Red Cross Center, which was the Kerr House, which means cake house in English. They had it all set up and everything. I'm sorry, it means what in English? Cake house, did you say? Yeah, it's Kerr House, K-U-R-H-A-U-S, and that's English for cake. Cake house? German yeah. for cake. Cake right. house, yeah. Wiesbaden wasn't very badly hit. It was, uh, they dropped a few bombs there. They were aiming for Frankfurt, and they dropped a few bombs there and destroyed a few things, but the city pretty much was intact. It's a beautiful place. It was, uh, I guess it was some of the older musicians that lived there or something. Now, in, were there civilians, German civilians, in the city at the time? Oh, sure, it was and loaded with you, them. Did sure. you get to meet them? Were, did you get to meet German civilians? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, because when you worked in the uh, in the signal center, there were German technicians here and everything, and if you, we, we went out, uh, some of the guys went out for beers at night, and uh, right. we couldn't do any shopping because there was nothing to buy. Everything we bought was from the PX. Right. And how long were you in uh, Wiesbaden? Well, from the time that uh, first went, I guess it was in the middle of summer '45, up until uh, April or May in '46. And then I got, uh, we got transferred to, uh, we got our orders to go home. I got transferred to uh, uh, Namur Charleroi in Belgium, which, is a, which was a rebel devil. And I spent a few extra weeks there because I come down with appendicitis. Oh. And you were operated on? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then after that? I came home. Yeah. And how was your trip home? Well, it was another, well, it was another uh, 12 day trip because we were on a, on a uh, 
the USS Washington and it, uh, and it uh, we were out about six days at sea and we had to turn back because uh, there was a, a sick uh, sailor, I guess, in one of the ships somewhere in the ocean. We had a, we met it and we had to transfer him from uh, their ship to ours because we had medical personnel aboard and we had mm -hmm. a hospital, so, yeah. uh, operating room and so yeah. forth. So uh, uh, it was on a freighter, I think, if I remember right. But I can very clearly remember them transferring him and the seas, you know, up and down. He's this little lifeboat and the guys are rolling. You know, uh -huh. Get him across there. How were, the, how were the seas on your trip back? It wasn't too bad because we come back in, uh, in the late spring, which is, uh, which is not as st stormy as September. Uh -huh. And uh, when you returned, where, was the, where did you return to? Uh, we went to uh, New York. Yeah. We we had left from New York. In fact, I think in, uh, when I first went over, we returned to uh, New York and uh, went from there to Camp Kilmer, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And oh, Fort Dix. Excuse me. I left from Camp Kilmer and Fort Dix. We returned to. I was discharged at uh, Fort Dix. You were discharged from Fort Dix. Right. And when was that? Uh, that was sometime in. May of 40, uh, 46. Yeah. And how did you, uh, how, what was your homecoming like? Oh, I was happy to get home and lay down a bit and yeah. get some rest. And how did your family? Well, you know, my you? mother was happy. Right. My father was dead. He's been dead oh. for years. And uh, uh, of course, my pet dog was happy to see me. And <laughs> I, my, my sister, yeah. uh, I had one sister living home. Yeah. She's my twin sister. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and then you, then you want to get out and see everybody and go every place yeah. and meet everybody. You know. yeah. I went to see my girlfriend. Yeah. And she gave you a, a good reception? She was happy to see you, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She says, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the, uh, the different reception that, uh, let's say, uh, Korean and uh, Vietnam War veterans received when they returned versus the way you were you were welcomed. Well, I think the whole thing was pathetic from the beginning. The way they the way they were treated, and the way they the way the politicians handled the whole thing. I just see something on TV about uh, Johnson there and uh, the whole gang that was involved there. And I use the word gang very nicely. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think it was. Uh, it wasn't their fault. Uh, I mean, they, they they had taken all these people and and uh, pushed them as a group and you and used them, you know, to uh, to further their own uh, what they wanted to, what they thought they were going to get done like that, you yeah. know, and it didn't work out that way. You know, it's Did a it's a tragedy in American history, you know, and I uh, I feel bad because you know they, they were the, they were the same as I was, you know, they were. They would, you know, pull here, pull there, put here, done this, done that. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was more ferocious than what uh, what was in uh, Europe at the time. Mm -hmm. Did you join the reserves? Uh, no, I was automatically uh, uh, reserved because uh, up until a certain age, and uh, in fact, uh, when I get out, I went to school in Boston. When I get out. Oh, I went back. I went back to high school when I get out. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, and uh, I, I finished started at high school in '46 and graduated in '47 because oh. I was drafted in, in, in my senior year, and uh, so uh, then I went to school in Boston for about three years, and uh, so I uh, I didn't join any reserve, I, but I was in the inactive reserve, okay. and I sweated it out that they were going to redraft me any day, but it never happened. What was that like, going to high school after being overseas in a war? Well, it, it didn't bother me. I yeah. was I was alongside a couple more people who were in high school. Yeah. In fact, I was the only one of several veterans that came back to finish high school. And uh, I didn't have any problem. I mean, to <coughs> you got to realize the students in those days are a lot different. The students nowadays, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was, there was no problem. We we ate lunch together. We we socialized, yeah. and uh, you know, we got along very nicely. 
There was no major problems. Yeah. Did you uh, take advantage of the GI Bill and get education beyond high school? Yes, I did. That's why I say I went to school in Boston. Well, I went oh, to oh, Dedham I thought you went to high no, school no, in Boston. No. I'm sorry. What school did you go to in Boston? I went to Wentworth Franklin. Oh, good. And what did you study there? I studied aircraft engineering. Mm -hmm. and aircraft maintenance and engineering. Was that your profession after? Yes, yeah. mostly, yeah. yeah. And where did you work? Oh, I've worked for Raytheon, uh, yeah. uh, iTech, uh, Piper Aircraft in yeah. Florida. Uh, worked for Wiggins Airways over in Norwood. Uh, I spent uh, 20 years away from this area. I worked all over the country. I worked uh -huh. in California. I worked in Texas. And uh, I wasn't married then. See, I didn't get married till 23 years mm -hmm. ago. Ah. So I was footloose and fancy. Yeah. Food. How do you feel that uh, your military experience prepared you for your life after the military? Well, it does give you some idea of what's going on, you know. Yeah. You, you, you get to meet all these people and see all these various things that go on in the military, and you meet all these characters and so forth. Yeah. So, so you, get a, you get a pretty good insight of uh, mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah. Is there a thought or a, a, or a memory you'd like to share with the community for posterity about can I take a break here yeah sure we're just about close we're just about uh, ending now yeah okay well thanks for returning um, after we, we did take a little break I wanted to ask you is there any uh, thought or memory that you'd like to share with those who might be listening to this tape in the future? Uh, I would say that uh, I'm uh, pretty happy that uh, I was able to serve my country. Right. And uh, I uh, would say that uh, I'm not uh, at all unhappy about things that happened to me, what happened in my life. It was. Uh, broken up in regards to my school and so forth, uh, I don't have any regrets, yeah. none whatsoever. Right. Uh, I just took things as they happened, things as they came, and uh, uh, just overcome the obstacles, and there were plenty. And, uh, you know, I, I got done what I had to, and, uh, you know, and uh, I'm not all unhappy about what happened. Right. You know? I got my GI Bill of Rights, which I used, and uh, you know, uh, met a lot of people, done a lot of things, went some places, and uh, I'm not, a, <coughs> excuse me, not at all, uh, have no regrets. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, sharing your time and, and your memories with us. Thank you for coming in today. Okay, can I say one more thing? Oh, yeah, please uh, we, do, uh, please do. We took uh, basic training yeah. in Rockford, Illinois. The, uh, those people out there treated us uh, royally. They opened their houses, and, we, and, and it was very nice out there. That Everybody, every place they went, uh, you got invited to houses, you got invited to the churches, and uh, uh, there, was, there was just the greatest... I think that was one of the greatest uh, enlightenment, enlightenments in my life, to have met those people out there. And uh, I think it made uh, our life as soldiers a lot better. Mm. It was pretty nice. So they got you off to a good start. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I think that uh, gives a good boost. Yeah. <coughs> and any other thoughts you'd like to share with us? Uh, oh, I think that uh, Every kid 18, 20 years of age should go into the military. <clears throat> I think that that should be mandatory. Mm -hmm. I think it would make for a better country and uh, would help a lot of kids to straighten them out and uh, give them some guidance and direction. And uh, I, uh, I think the country uh, would be better off, would be better for if more people would join in and do. I realize we've had a couple of bad wars, but you know, as long as we, we were involved in these situations, uh, I, I don't see any other thing, mm -hmm. any other way of, mm -hmm. but, but to do what you have to. And uh, I, I have 
no, no regrets about it. Well, thank you You're again welcome. for sharing your, your memories and, and your time with us. And I thank You're you welcome. for coming in today. Okay. I'll take a hundred copies.